Sophie here. So today I'm going to show you the key ingredients you need, the all natural ingredients you need for your DIY skincare products. Alright, so what I thought I would do today is collate on this little table in front of me, this little counter, the ingredients that I think are key for making a number of different uh, DIY products, skincare products, because I do so many of these DIY videos. And a lot of you say to me, Sophie, what ingredients do I need or where should I get them from or which are the best? So I'm going to just attempt to not take too long here and just show you some of the, the ones that I think are really good to have in a collection. What I recommend you do if you like doing your DIY is start building a little sort of DIY pantry, a little sort of inventory um, of oils and, and other ingredients to hand so that when you see a video that you like, you've already got that stuff or you might have an idea. Also, you can sort of experiment on your own. That's the beauty of DIY. Once you have these ingredients, you can think, oh, hang on a minute, I'll look up this or maybe I'll try mixing that, this with that. So that's that's what I think is the value of, of having a collection. Now, before we get started, I'm going to say storage is a very, very important because the whole point of making your own uh, products is that they're fresh. So when you buy something in a store, uh, anything from an eye cream to a face cream to a deodorant, it's probably been sitting on that store shelf for months, if not years. You would be absolutely amazed at the shelf life that is the shelf life that's built into many products that are up to three years so I always think that ingredients for your skin are very much like ingredients that you eat they're as good as they are fresh so all of these that I'm going to show you today keep in a cool dark cabinet so if your house isn't too cool i live in southern california you have to be a little bit careful because some rooms are a lot warmer they get a lot of sun so i'm very very judicious where i store them and some of them and i'll tell you which as we go through you actually want to keep in the fridge all right so let's get started the first thing that i want to talk about is oils so a lot of my serums bath products eye products uh hair products almost I'd say 80% of my DIYs include using some kind of a plant oil. Now plant oils, you could use an olive oil, you could use a grapeseed oil, uh, these are oil, a rice bran oil, these are oils that you'll typically find at any grocery store. If you buy those ones, make sure that you get the best quality that you possibly can for skincare. That means that you want to look for cold pressed, you want to look for organic. But always, always look for, or it should say on the container, cold pressed. But don't skimp on those if you're using them for your skin. So those are the ones that you'll find. Now, the more speciality oils that I want to show you that I like here are Sunflower oil is a really great oil. Uh, this is a great brand. I'm Rather than call out every brand that I go, which I'm just gonna put the links for every single thing I mention underneath this video, so it's really easy for you. Um, I love the packaging, actually, of this brand, La Torangelle. La Torangelle, I think I've said that right. Anyway, beautiful French brand, very, very good quality organic oils. But sunflower oil is a great oil for a base oil. It's a little bit thinner, so it'll thin out some of the thicker, more viscous oils, um, and you can use it for body and face products. Now, another one is avocado oil. Avocado, um, is, is really almost like a kind of new kid on the block. It's trending right now for food and for skincare. I have been using it for many years, for about 15 to 20 years, because it has so many very specific skin care benefits um, that have been scientifically proven. It's actually very good, aside from beauty, it's very good for psoriasis. And a little aside, it's also extremely good for gum disease and periodontal disease. Scientific studies have found this to be the case. You would just rub it on your gums. So those are two oils there. Now another oil that I use an awful lot of is sesame oil. Not to be confused with getting it from the grocery store, from the Asian section, because it'll often be toasted and you don't want toasted, you want like pure, look to the body section of, of a store. And again, we'll put the link for this one underneath the video. Sesame oil is used a lot in Ayurvedic uh, medicine and philosophy and Ayurvedic beauty. 
Again, it has very, very specific benefits. Um, it's actually very good for your immune system. And so I use, try to use that in a lot of my recipes. It also has a very uh, light SPF. Um, another uh, plant oil I wanted to call out because it really is one that you have to have if you're serious about making your own skincare, and that is rosehip seed oil. This oil actually is really one of the very few oils that will help with scarring and with stretch marks. So if it helps with, the, with scarring and stretch marks, indentation in the skin, um, and scientific evidence proves this to be true, then you can imagine all the other things that it does for your skin. So if nothing else, have this and use it on cellulite, stretch marks, and any of those other kinds of skin conditions. But I love to use it in uh, facial preparations. It's also very, very high in vitamin C. So if you didn't want to use a synthetic form of vitamin C, which I use in many of my skin DIY serums, the powder and such, you would just stick to rosehip seed oil. Um, then we have an evening primrose oil. Uh, very good uh, for women's skin, perimenopause, menopause, uh, full of omegas, very important. And then finally, the last oil that I wanted to call out is sea buckthorn oil, also very high in those omegas. And those omegas are very good for nourishing the, the layers on your skin, the lipid layer, the layer. So this is a protective mantle of your skin because we want to be careful of little commercial products and um, you know regular products with all these toxic um, petroleum-derived ingredients actually will destroy that layer, that natural layer of your skin. All right, so that's oils, my friends. I know this is a lot of information in one video, so I hope it's not too confusing, but I'm going to move those off center stage. And I'm just moving two products here into center stage. These are your butters. So almost always, if you're going to make skincare, you're going to need two butters. One is cocoa butter and one is shea butter. You almost can't go wrong with the brand here um, unless you're buying from a really, like, sort of, bad store, uh, but you can't go wrong with health food store. They tend to always come from, uh, certainly shea butter from West Africa. Um, I like to try and buy these from women's co-ops, particularly shea butter, because uh, then we're supporting you know, those communities. But those are really, really great um, butters that you're gonna need. Now, a couple of other things just to have to hand. Witch hazel is a very important one. I use witch hazel in deodorants, in toners, uh, mouthwashes, a number of different personal care DIYs. So always have witch hazel, it's inexpensive. I would also, also always recommend that you have aloe vera juice. Or if you want to uh, do it as well, have the gel. Sometimes I use the gel, our aloe vera gel. Sometimes I use the juice. Just make sure it's organic, certified organic. Okay, now I'm going to move into a couple of miscellaneous ingredients um, that I like to have to hand. Um, one is a beeswax, beeswax pellets. Now, I know those of you who are vegan might not want to use a beeswax, which is fine. There are get-arounds, but for those of you who don't mind, I recommend um, beeswax pellets. Beeswax is really what holds the formula together. It's what gives it its texture and its hardness. So if you're making a balm or a, a body cream or even a face cream, um, lip balms, etc., I use it so much, and of course candles and whatnot. So I always have a huge bag of yellow beeswax um, uh, pellets, which is um, undyed. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing, that is going to be useful if you are serious about skin making skincare is emulsifying wax. So you want a vegetable derived emulsifying wax and emulsifying wax it comes in pellets as well. And this is what um, blends your formulation. So if you're using a water and an oil, um, so you might be using um, a hydrosol, let's say a rose hydrosol, and then you've got oils and butters. If you don't have something binding it together, like an emulsifier and a mayonnaise, they're just gonna separate. And you're gonna see the bottle with the oil at the top and the water component at the bottom. So you have to emulsify it, that's really important. Um, I've added to my um, miscellaneous ingredients zinc oxide powder, non-nano. The reason why is you'll use this in a variety of different things. Any kind of sunscreen you make, you're gonna need this. Also, if you're making a diaper cream and also for uh, deodorants and many other uses, it's just useful to have to hand. Um, what else have I got here? Oh. 
Um, I wanted to show you this. This is called um, Neo Defend. And this is an all natural, really great um, antibacterial preservative. Again, remember, I'm putting the links for all of these if I'm going too quickly for you. So you can really spend some time um, finding these products in the links underneath the video. But Neo Defend is really great if you want to uh, completely naturally preserve your products. Um, then I thought I'd also throw in here French green cosmetic clay. I love clay because you can make all of these face masks and body masks um, at a pin, I mean at the fraction of the price. Um, it's so inexpensive and so effective. And there's also another product that I really like, which you might have seen, Indian Healing Clay Aztec Secret, which is another kind of clay pulling mask. And I like to add other things to this as well. Um, and then we have, we're almost getting to the end here, guys. I'm sorry to keep you so long. I hope you're still with me, guys. Um, I have a vitamin C, uh, uh, it's a magnesium ascorbyl, a, a, a scorbyl product. Uh, this is a very stable form of vitamin C. Um, and I'm actually going to put the link under the video for the two different kinds of vitamin C that I recommend. Because this one I really recommend for various um, um, vitamin C DIYs that I've done. Do check out my channel and subscribe if you haven't because I have all these different vitamin C serums and creams. And then also so I'm going to put the L-ascorbic acid powder that is water soluble that so many of you asked me about and I'm going to put the link for that in big caps underneath this video because you definitely want that. Um, then I have here a fruit acid complex which I really like because it's your glycolic fruit acids you can add this in tiny quantities you have to follow the directions because it's a tiny little bit to make your own glycolic product how great is that save a lot of money um, and then finally almost finally willow bark extract which is the same as salicylic acid and if you have problem skin acne or you want to make problem um, products for these skin conditions, then you are going to want some of that too. And I will be doing DIYs, including these. And then finally, I just wanted to do a little shout out for calendula oil, which is a very soothing oil uh, for any kind of difficult skin um, condition, breakout, sensitivity, rosacea. And then last but not least, always make sure when you're on your travels that you gather a number of different containers, because there's nothing more annoying when you're coming to make your skincare ingredients and you're like, oh, I haven't got a pump bottle or a spray bottle or a dropper bottle or a roll-on bottle or an opaque bottle. Get your bottles and jars and I'll put a few links for them underneath this and just have them to hand because you'll be so grateful when it's midnight and you're wanting, to, oh, I want to make an eye cream at midnight, which is normally me. And it wasn't last but not least because I have one more thing I want to show you guys essential oils. Okay, this is the biggest tip that I want to give you. This is my ch chest. It's an old tea chest and I have in here, goodness knows, probably about uh, 50 to 60 essential oils in here and then I have a whole nother chest. But here's the thing, you want to start building your collection of essential oils now. It's an investment. These oils will last for well up to two or three years. So you buy a little bottle, you think, oh, wow, that's $14 for that tiny bottle or $25. Because essential oils are different prices depending on the oil. There's a huge discrepancy. A grapefruit oil, a uh, grapefruit oil, excuse me, or a lemon oil is very inexpensive because there's grapefruits and lemons everywhere. But then if you're buying a jasmine oil, it's going to be, or a sandalwood, it's going to be way more expensive because it takes gazillions of jasmine flowers to be distilled to make your oils. So that's why there's a big price difference. But do start buying them. I get almost all of my oils from Mountain Rose Herbs. A lot of you ask me this question, Sophie, where do we get our essential oils from? I like Mountain Rose Herbs because they, I've trusted them for years. I know this company inside and out. They're based in Oregon. 
They are sustainable. They're invested in sustainable agriculture and farming and organic. And to me, that's almost one of the most important things when I'm buying uh, my essential oils because I don't want to be destroying the planet in the process. They're extremely good quality, they're pure, they're therapeutic, and they're reasonably priced. So hopefully that answers a lot of you guys' questions. All right, my friends, sorry that was so long and I hope you didn't fast forward or you can keep the video and then go back if you need to find those links and just look underneath or you can go I'm just not going to watch the whole video but I'm going to just check out all those links that you've put underneath so that's all from me do subscribe there are so many DIY uh, videos now I'm just clocking them up and leave me comments and also leave me suggestions of specific DIY um, videos that you want me to do it can be about food or it can be about skincare or anything else I will see you next time